the deformations, and we can even model what that does optically if you're trying to focus. And then, you know, again, pictures are nice, but a lot of times you're going to also need the quantification. So here, if we're applying a sinusoidal, sinusoidal drive signal, I can very easily see the asymmetry in my translation. I only go about two, two microns in one direction, and I go almost 12 microns in the other direction. I can look at translation versus drive voltage and make sure if that's linear or not. And you can see in this case, it was not linear over the whole range. And so you can really start looking, you know, are there stiction problems, are there other things going on with the device that need to be handled prior to commercialization. Another very interesting thing is confirming the mechanical models that you use in the development process. So here on the left, uh, someone was looking at a cantilever sensor array, and they knew that it should have uh, resonance frequency around 950 kilohertz. Well, we actually found that the, the highest resonance frequency was at 953 kilohertz. The other thing to notice is while the overall motion shown in the video, the deflections do actually match the model, you can see a big variation across the cantilever array. And we ultimately trace that back down to there was different thicknesses of each of the cantilevers that was unexpected from the process. And so some deflected more than others, and that means some would be a more sensitive detector than others. We talked already about using region finding software, so you can take a complex device like you see here, break it into component regions and characterize them separately for lateral dimensions, XY deflections, distortions, and uh, rotation characteristics. So there's a lot that you can do with your device once you can measure it easily and rapidly and flexibly. You know, there's uh, a lot you can, can learn from quantification of characteristics. Just another example uh, for beam deflectors. So here we were looking at, at a series. What we were trying to do was evaluate crosstalk between mirrors. And so we could activate multiple mirrors at once, as you see here. We also did tests doing one mirror at a time to see whether there was electrical or mechanical coupling between one device and the next. And here we characterized sag, bow, deflection, overall range of tilt motion, things like that. And then unfortunately, this is the one video that I know doesn't work in the presentation. I was unable to locate the original one. But this is an interesting thing where you can even use the dynamic characterization to look at thermal responsivity of devices. This was a joint project between Sandia, MIT, and us. And we wanted to look at um, an optical switch. And it was very important to understand how it deformed when it was in the off position and essentially a high powered laser was heating the device up. And so we did a series of experiments where we timed laser heating pulses with our strobing and were able to characterize the overall peak to valley deflection of the device when the laser was on and off. And we looked at that, we looked at a variety of devices with different coatings as well as under different drive characteristics. And we were even able to figure out the threshold of plastic deformation. So essentially, the amount of power this optical switch could handle before it was permanently distorted through changes in the polysilicon structure. So this was a really uh, nice experiment that was done to show kind of more advanced quantification than simply driving a device at a given voltage. We have found the need over the years to support custom analysis and hardware control. So the men's field is so varied that there's people that want to use their own heater stages, they want to be able to use their own drive instrumentation, automate various probe planners, or even do analyses that are either proprietary or which are not standard in the software. And so we created actually some interface points where 
you can write things in MATLAB, you can control external hardware via TCP IP and even our system via that. So people have advanced uh, command and control uh, algorithms that they've written that can control our instrument, our analyses, as well as inserting their own. And so this is just something to consider in MEMS devices. You know, comprehensive packages are good, but you know, what, what is the capability of extending that as new applications or new problems arise? So that's about the end of my talk here today. I just wanted to kind of summarize here that, you know, in our experience, 3D microscopy really provides very comprehensive MEMS characterization. Uh, it's a nice combination of fast measurement speed, extremely high accuracy, non-contact and non-destructive, and it provides both static and dynamic capability. It's hard to talk, um, you know, especially with the proprietary nature of the various devices, about the applications in great detail. But one can characterize in-plane and out-of-plane motion, do Bode and Nyquist plots, you can look at lateral dimensions, steps, and roughnesses. And then, you know, over the years, there's a lot of customization and optimization for the MEMS community that has to come into uh, the measurement devices. And so that's everything from the specialized objective that we call a through transmissive media objective to look through at encapsulated devices or devices in environmental chambers, all the way to looking at uh, film analysis, having MATLAB and TCP IP control, and customized fixturing. So, you know, that concludes my talk for today. I'll now open up for uh, questions. And, uh, you know, so please hold on the line. So, see what the uh, overall questions here are. So please, if you if you have further questions, uh, love to love to hear from you. So one question here is, you know, what is the maximum frequency that can be measured dynamically on the device? It's about uh, 2.4 uh, megahertz right now can be uh, measured on the devices. So anything from complete static devices all the way up to 2.4 megahertz. Uh, someone asks, can we measure velocity and acceleration of the motion? We can actually measure both of those. So we have advanced capability in our database where we can look at position and we can also look at derivative of position so we can give people calculations of both velocity and acceleration. We also have the ability to combine multiple metrics. So say it's important to know in terms of a pass-fail criteria some combination of tilt angle plus displacement has to be less than a given value. You can combine results comprehensively to get more um, in-depth characterization of devices. Someone asks, you know, do, do you believe that we can look at seal to shaft contact behavior? We have, in a variety of situations, looked at um, contact of devices. You know, laterally is easy. Vertically, uh, if one is on top of one another, we need some level of transparency of devices. Another area where we've looked at contact behavior is since we can look through these encapsulation materials, we've actually had people press, for instance, glass or other material against devices, and you can look at the bearing ratio and contact area under various pressure conditions. Um, yeah, and so some further clarification, but can we strobe with a 6,000 RPM shaft uh, with surface features around 15 microns? We can't actually strobe at that at that level. Uh, we'd have to look and make sure that uh, you know the motion is truly periodic. 
Another person asks, uh, you know, how much, you know, how do we handle the light level? Because um, it seems like you need a lot of light if you're strobing, and that's true. Uh, we actually use extremely high brightness LED design in our metrology system so that we can get maximum light onto the sample. So there have been situations where we're, we've been challenged with light, but for most applications, it's not been an issue. Uh, someone is asking, uh, they, they ask, can, we, can I mention more about the enhanced lateral resolution? And uh, yeah, just very briefly, that technique, it's called the Acuity XR in terms of an option on our microscopes. We developed that about three years ago and what it does is it takes a series of measurements of, the, of a device, um, of a part, uh, combines those multiple measurements along with a kind of a comprehensive optical model of our system to remove the blurring effects that are introduced by you know, any optic um, as it images a device. And with that combination technique, we've actually shown, as I said, more than a 3x improvement in lateral resolution and been able to go to features down to 130 nanometers uh, wide being characterized. I'd say for metrology of features, we probably still can't go much below 200 nanometers, but we can certainly detect down to about 130 nanometers with this advanced measurement technique. All right, so another person asks, you know, what materials can we measure and what reflectivities? Essentially, this system can measure almost any material you can put under it. So we have measured things as rough as paper and the black foam that's used by uh, researchers in laser fusion uh, experimentation all the way up to mirrors that are coded to be 99.9% reflective. Uh, surface roughnesses we can handle from microns of RA all the way down to angstrom level RA. So we have a, a broad capability of, uh, of surfaces that can be measured on this one device. And uh, with that, it looks like you know, we're out of questions for now. If anyone has you know, further questions, I guess, uh, okay, we got one more, and then, uh, then we'll wrap it up because we're, we're approaching the hour here. So someone asks, what is the slope range of the microscope? So on smooth surfaces, we can measure essentially from zero degrees up to about 54 degrees of slope. On rough surfaces, we can actually measure to very nearly 90 degrees. So even with a 20x objective, if we're looking at a metal surface, we've been able to measure to 88, 88 and a half degrees with no problem. On a smooth surface, we're limited by the microscope optics, and so that uh, confines us to about um, about 50 degrees, a little higher than that. All right, well, with that, I think we will wrap up the presentation again. Thank you, everyone, for your time today. Uh, my apologies, ah, yeah, 90 degrees, one last thing, 90 degrees is based on scattering. Um, so thank you for your time. I am happy to entertain any further questions offline for you. We're happy to talk about, you know, sample measurements and, and other things. And uh, please take the time to uh, fill out those five survey questions at the end of the talk. And again, my apologies for the technical difficulties at the start of the presentation. So thank you all, and I hope to hear from you soon. Bye.
The organizer has ended the session and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you. 